Good afternoon. Sociologists, or whoever studies this kind of stuff, have come up with the term nominative determinism. In other words, the name you have influences the kind of person you are, maybe even the kind of job that you choose. I noticed some of this in the Steeler game on Sunday against the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles players include people with names like Slay, Sweat, Hertz, a running back called Gainwell, all things you would associate with football. The researchers have found other examples, such as an auctioneer called Sales, a substitute teacher called Fill-In, a food industry consultant named Popcorn, and my favorite, a tax accountant called Gold Grab. This might be a curiosity and even humorous in our time, but nominative determinism was taken dead seriously in the Bible days. People's names meant something significant about who they were. And at times, people changed their names whenever their lives went in a very dramatically different direction. The best known examples are Jacob, which means trickster, who then changed his name to Israel, which means wrestles with God. And the apostle Simon received a new name from Jesus. He called him Peter, which means rock, because Peter would be the foundation upon which the church was built. In the devotion today, we're looking at a woman who is named Naomi, which means pleasant, but she changed her name to Mara, which means bitter. Naomi was married and had two sons, lived in Bethlehem, but then when famine hit the land, they moved to the country of Moab. While they were there, her sons married, but then her husband died, and then both of her sons died. The fact that her sons died should be no surprise to us because their names were Malon and Kilion, which means weakness and consumption. Now, in those days, women needed to be part of a household that was led by a male relative, father, husband, son, brother. Otherwise, they would be destitute. Naomi had no one. All she had were her two daughters-in-law, the widows of her sons. And what was even worse was Naomi lived in a foreign land, which meant it was much less likely that anyone would help her. When Naomi learned that the famine back in Bethlehem had ended, she got ready to go back home. There was a slim chance that maybe some distant relative might have pity on her and take her in. Much more likely, she would have to live in Bethlehem as a beggar, but at least she would be among her own people. As she was getting ready to go, her two daughters-in-law told her that they were going to go with her, but she refused. She said, why should you share in my misery? You're both still young enough that you can remarry, and it's much more likely that you'll find husbands here among your people in Moab. Now, one of her daughters-in-law wept about what Naomi had said, but obeyed her. But the other refused and insisted on joining her in going to Bethlehem. The daughter-in-law who went with Naomi was named Ruth, and that book of the Bible tells the rest of her story. When Naomi and Ruth arrived back in Bethlehem, the Bible tells us the whole town was stirred because of this, and they said, can this be Naomi? She's returned to be back with us after being gone for so long. But she replied, don't call me Naomi. Remember, Naomi means pleasant. And her life was far from pleasant. She was mourning the deaths of her husband and her sons, and she faced only a grim future. So she told them, call me Mara, which means bitter. Did she tell them to call her Mara because she now had a bitter life? Or did she want to be called Mara because now she had become bitter about what had happened to her. The words that follow seem to indicate that she carried bitterness in her heart. She said, I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. The Lord has afflicted me. The Almighty has brought misfortune upon me. She really was Mara.
she was bitter. Now this can be easy for us to relate to because perhaps something like this has happened to you. Even though you probably didn't change your name, you may have had your life move from pleasantness to bitterness. Maybe it's because of deaths or broken relationships in your family. Maybe it's because of health conditions that you now have. Maybe it's because of financial concerns or many other possibilities that you, like Naomi, may feel bitter toward God because of what has happened. But in the story of Ruth, there is a hint of blessing because even though Naomi told everyone to call her Mara, the Bible didn't. Now, the Bible has gone along with other name changes when Jacob became Israel, when Simon became Peter, when Abram became Abraham, when Saul became Paul. But for the rest of the book of Ruth, the narr narrator still calls her Naomi, never calls her Mara. And the reason is because God had pleasant things in mind for her. As it turns out, a relative married Ruth and took Naomi in with her so that she could be part of his family. And then when Ruth had a son, she put her son in Naomi's arms to care for him. And the women of the town said, Naomi has a son. This baby named Obed brought joy to a heart where the deaths of Malon and Kilion had left bitterness. So in your bitter times, Watch for the Obed that God will bring to you. Would you pray with me, please? Lord, we lift ourselves up to you in the times when we feel as though pleasantness has moved to bitterness. And we lift up those people around us, some whom we know, and some who are completely anonymous to us, who are going through bitter times of their own. Perhaps, Lord, you are calling us to be an Obed for them, to be a source of joy and blessing and pleasantness as you work your good will through us for their lives. We pray this all to the glory of Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks for joining me. We'll talk again later.